Hello, hello everyone. My name is Elise. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing so, so good today. We're going to be doing my TBR for the month of April and it has been a hot minute since I've done a TBR. So I'm really excited to do one. I tend to do better if I have a like larger TBR to choose from for the month. I get analysis paralysis when I'm trying to choose my next book to read. So having a selection, like a smaller selection, as opposed to this selection to choose from, it really helps cut down the time for me between books. So we will go ahead and get into my TBR. It is a pretty big one. And like usual, we're gonna start with the for sures for my TBR, and then we'll get into the maybes. Now my book haul revisit for March, aka which picks my book that I need to read for April, is going to be the next video coming out. So because that hasn't come out yet, I'm just going to show you the back of the book that I have to read from that video. Spoiler, I only had two books that I had not read from that book haul revisit, which I think is the best I've ever done. It was a pretty small haul. And both of the books I haven't read yet were pink. So let's see if you can tell which pink book this is. So this is the back of the one that I have picked from that book haul revisit. Again, that'll be the next video. So if you want to watch and see what that book is, feel free. But that's book number one that we need to get to, which is a little bit of a mystery. The next book that I definitely need to get to in April is a buddy read, and that's going to be Kim Ji Young, born 1982. This is by Chu Nam Ju, and it's translated from the Korean by Jamie Chang. This is published by Liverlight. It's a very slim novel, and I've heard wonderful things about this. Uh, this is one of my five star predictions that I had from my video last year and I am trying to finish up all of those five star predictions. I try to finish them up by the end of April so in May I can start with a new round and I'm very much trying to do that. This one I happen to have a friend who also had it on their TBR so we decided last year we had picked a bunch of books that we had in common um, and we picked five that we were going to be buddy reading together. We've already read two. This is the third. And this one is about misogyny in modern day Korean culture. It follows a 30 something millennial woman who has a young daughter and is working full time and sort of responsible for all of the care of the young daughter. And she starts doing strange things like impersonating people both dead and alive. Uh, it really starts to upset the people around her. And I think at one point her husband is thinking about institutionalizing her. Oh, sending her to a male psychiatrist. So this one I believe also has footnotes that have facts interspersed throughout to kind of further infuriate you on the misogyny because a lot of the things happening to the character I think are based in things that are actually happening. So I'm really excited to read this. Again, it's a short one. I think I really could love it, hence why it's a five-star prediction. Now, in that vein, we have the two other five-star predictions that I have not gotten to yet for my past video. I always pick 10, five backlist, and five frontlist titles. I tend to normally have a little bit of a backlog of the backlist, and I do have one other one that I need to get to, and that is Butter Honey Pig Bread. This is by Francesca. Equiasi, and it's published by Arsenal Pulp Press. This one is the interwoven stories of three Nigerian women, yes, one mother and then her twin daughters. And the mother believes that the family is cursed by this certain type of spirit. And I think we're following whether or not that is true and also why she thinks that they're cursed. I think this is gonna be fascinating at the time that it came out, which I think it came out in like 2020. Let me double check. Yeah, it came out in 2020. I think this printing was in 2021. Everybody was loving this that was reading it. So again, that's kind of why it's a five-star prediction for me. And it does say that this was on the Giller long list the year that it came out. And it was also on Canada Reads. So I'm excited for this one. I do think I might be trying this one via audiobook. I have the audiobook of this on hold at my library and hopefully that will be a good way to consume it. If not, I'll switch back over to the physical. But since my TBR is so big this month, I need to do some via audio to have time to complete them all. 
And the last five star prediction that I need to get to is one that has been on so many TBRs and I really just need to read it. That is wanting. Oh shit, my husband's calling me. Hold on. Okay, we're back. My husband was calling me because he wanted to adopt a pet, which he does this all the time because he works at a vet clinic and there's always pets that are getting surrendered and I have to be the voice of reason. So we limit the amount of pets that we have. I do have our other pet down here. He's sleeping behind me. If you can see him, let me pick it up so you can, I have it on a tripod. So we're gonna, there he is sleeping right behind me like a little angel living his uh, best only sibling life very happy. All right, back to the books. So we were talking about wanting. This has been on so many TBRs and I know I will love it. It's right up my alley. It's nonfiction. Women writing about desire is the subtitle. It's edited by Margot Kahn and Kelly McMasters and it's published by Catapult. It's part of their nonfiction series uh, on writing that they do a lot. Again, I know I will love this, but it is long and as I've said previously, I've been struggling to stick with essay collections and short story collections recently just because I have to go in and out of them and my focus hasn't really been consistent. So I need to read this though. Like now is the time I need to finish my five star predictions. So I need to find a way to make this happen and we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. That's all. We're gonna do it. We're moving on. That is the end of the must reads in April. Four books total. Now we're going to get into the maybes, but like usual, we're going to start with like the strongest maybes again and go down from there. April is poetry month and I'm very excited. I always try to read some extra poetry during this month and I always do at least one poetry focused video on my channel. Um, so I already know the video that I will be doing, but the three collections of poetry that I've picked out so far to read are Plot. This is by Claudia Rankin and it's published by Grove Press. And I have read Citizen, which is the one it talks about at the top. I think it's her best selling work before and really, really enjoyed it. And this one says it is crossing genres, combining verse, prose, and dialogue, which is her style. All of her works are like that. And it's talking about the understanding of creation and existence. All right, I'm intrigued. And this is set up into sections. So that is plot. Next collection that I'm interested in getting to is Amanda Gorman's collection, Call Us What We Carry. This one does contain The, the Hill We Climb, is that the name of it? The one that she read at the presidential inauguration, which is where she became very well known. And because we are currently in another election year in the US, and that's making me feel all kinds of things. I want to get to this this year to kind of re-inspire me maybe. Um, this is also maybe one of the thickest collections on my poetry shelf and I'm making a little bit of room for some other ones because I'm sure we'll buy more in April as well. So let's see what this one says. Amanda Gorman captures a shipwrecked moment in time and transforms it into a lyric of hope and healing. All right, so this is exploring history, language, identity, and the erasure through an imagination and intimate collage. All right, those themes are interesting enough to me. Um, and I do love The Hill We Climb, the one that she read at the inauguration. So I'm sure I will enjoy this collection as a whole. So that is Call Us What We Carry. Oh, and I should say this one is published by Viking. And then lastly, what I picked up off my shelves, and again, I might get to more and I will certainly buy more, so I might get to the new ones, is Motherfield. The subtitle of this is Poems and Belarusian Protest Diary. And this is by Julia Simafia Jeva. I probably butchered that, I'm so sorry. And it's translated from the Belarusian by Valzana Mort and Hanif Abdurraqib who writes a lot of essay collections, but I have not read one of them before. And it's published by Deep Vellum, specifically their uh, imprint Phenom Media is the one that did this. 
And this was on so many prize lists last year. I picked it up when I went to Deep Vellum last year in October. They're located in Texas. And it's a poetry collection where the personal is deeply political and ecological. And yeah, I just heard so much good buzz about this. And I think I did read a sample poem that they had posted on their Instagram account and really enjoyed it. So I'm happy to get to this. The text is really tiny in here. And I think because it says that part, part of the sections are like diary entries, they look like traditional prose like that. And then there's some sections like this. So really excited to get to this. I have high hopes. Those are the three poetry collections I have for the month. Now, in addition to that, I have a couple library books that I will be reading that are newer releases. Let's see if I can remember them. Firstly, I'm going to be listening on audio to the new Veronica Speedwell book. It is A Grave Robbery by Deanna Rayborn. I think it's the ninth in the series. I'm so excited for a new one It because I got caught up last year. It's been a year since I've read one and I'm really looking forward to it. I've been struggling with audiobooks lately and I know that this will be just the ticket I need to get back into them. The audio narrator is really, really good and I just love these characters. So I'm sure that will be fun. Again, it's the ninth in a series, so I won't tell you the synopsis of that one, but it's a Victorian era murder mystery series that has a light romance plot between the two main characters, Veronica and Stoker. And it's lovely. Definitely read them if you like murder mysteries. All right, other library book is, what's it called? Fruit of the Dead. Oh, who writes this? I can't remember the author. I will put it up here. Um, and this one, I'm going to be reading via ebook, which I don't think I've talked about on the channel, but I got an e-reader at the end of last year and I have really been enjoying it. I had put it off for so long because I didn't really want to have more screen time. I have lots of screen time for work and other things. So I had resisted, but the main reason I got it is this is maybe more than people want to know, but I have had insomnia for three going on four years now. And at the end of last year, I was finally committed to starting to work on it. And being able to read at night without waking up my partner by having to turn on a light is part of me trying to work on that. So the e-reader became a necessary thing and I have really enjoyed it. I don't read a ton on it because I really only use it for insomnia stuff. Um, but it has been very helpful. I have been enjoying it. And secondary bonus, it's so good for books that have really tiny print and I can, it, it's bigger on the e-reader. You can enlarge it. And that has been a wonderful extra bonus. So back to Fruit of the Dead, going to be reading this um, for my insomnia. This one, the cover is absolutely gorgeous. That is definitely part of what sold me, but I believe it's a retelling. What is it a retelling of? Is it a Hades and Persephone retelling? I honestly don't even remember. I don't remember what it's about and I'm not going to look it up. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, reading that one. Next up, we have Body Work by Melissa Phoebos. The Radical Power of Personal Narrative. This is also published by Catapult and it's one of those nonfiction in the writing series. And I really want to get to this one. My nonfiction shelves are out of control right now and I need to start reading down those shelves. So I'm trying to make a conscious effort to at least every month be reading one or two things from them. So this is one of the ones that I've picked this time. I will also be trying to do this via audio. The author is talking about the physical work of writing and I think it's part memoir part educational. She's talking about what it's like to put a piece of yourself on the page and label it as nonfiction so that everybody reading it knows that it is true and about your life and the implications of that. I think that's such a fascinating thing to think about. You know, when you're labeling something as fiction, I do think it gives you a little bit of license in the public space to not have to own everything personally that is coming up in the book. But with a memoir, you don't necessarily get that leeway. 
And I do think that's an area that's rife to potentially cause problems for people as they're writing about others in their life and about themselves. Really complex process. So I'm excited to get to this. And then next up, we have a couple more in this maybe pile and then a few extras at the end. So next up, we have The Birthday Party. This is by Laurent Mauvignier and it's translated by Daniel Levin Becker um, from the French and it's published by, published by Transit Books. I have been reading the entire shortlist for the Republic of Consciousness Prize for the US and Canada. And this is the only one I haven't started yet. So I need to get to this one. It is pretty thick and the font is so tiny. Oh my God. But this isn't available through my library as an ebook. So I can't even go that route. So I'm just going to have to physically read it and my eyes will be punished. But I do want to get to it. It follows a 24 hour period out in the French countryside that's very deeply rural and the protagonist is having a birthday party. They live around very few people and there are all of a sudden these strangers that appear. It's very tense and you start to figure out what might be happening. Really excited. I've heard great things and I'm hoping to love this one and I want to finish the short list. So that's why I'm picking this one up. And then I want to finish Peach Pit. I have been in the process of reading Peach Pit since January is when I first picked this up. So in January, I read the first three stories and then I stopped and I haven't picked it up since. And I really want to finish it. I was enjoying it at the time, but like I said, I've been struggling with collections lately and them capturing all of my focus. So we're going to put it on the TBR in the hopes that that makes me finish it. This is a short story collection that is about stories of unsavory women and has lots of amazing authors in here. Um, it has Sarah Rose Etter, Disha Filia, Lauren Groff, to name a few. And it's published by Zank Books. And this one, I adore the cover. So that is Peach Pit. Now the last two that I'm putting on here are both books that I will be starting in April, but definitely not finishing in April. But I wanted to put them here now so you know I'm starting them. The first one is the next in the Sherlock Holmes series. This is The Return of Sherlock Holmes and it's a short story collection. This is the sixth in the series, I believe. The short story collections, I always like to read slowly because they can get a little bit samey. So I spread them out over time and that's why it will take me longer than a month to finish, but I will start it this month. My editions are published by Headline and they're by Arthur Conan Doyle. Next up and lastly, the one that I will be starting in April but not finishing is Wellness by Nathan Hill. This is published by Knopf and this book is very big. I am reading this as one of my Picante Beef Babies for this year because it's over 500 pages long. And yeah, I'm really excited to get to this. I'm going to start it near the end of the month. That's why I'm not going to finish it because it's so long and I won't be starting it till the, near the end. But this is all about a marriage. I love stories about modern marriages and how complicated they are and why we choose the people that we choose. And I just find all of that very fascinating. And I think this could really be up my alley. The people that have loved it have loved it. And I think it could be one of those people. So we shall see. All right, those are all of the books that I will be attempting to read in the month of April. If you have read any of these, please let me know what you thought of them. I'm very excited to hear. And also let me know what you're planning to read for the month of April. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.